Welcome back to Crewworks, or as I like to call it, the messy dining table. In this video, I'm going to be looking at locomotive care. And then in part two, we're going to be looking at locomotive care as well, except Craig will be doing that. In part one, I'm going to be looking at the two most basic elements of locomotive care, which is dusting and wheel cleaning. So we've got a Class 8F by Hornby here, which is quite dusty, quite bad. A diesel Class 37 in EW and S livery from V Trains. And then we've even got the Duchess of Hamilton, but we'll come back to her later. So I'd recommend a brush like this. It's only a cheapo brush, it's from a cheapo high street store. But it's perfect, absolutely perfect. It's not too big, not too small. And the bristles are really soft. Really soft and gentle. Well, it's, it's, it's a brush designed for glossing, which is why the bristles are so soft. We're not going to be glossing the locomotive today, but we are definitely going to benefit from the bristles being so soft. So, you get your locomotive in one hand, and if it's a tender locomotive, obviously unhook the tender and put the tender to one side so that you've got just the main locomotive in your hand, the, the, you know, the engine part, whatever you want to call it. And then you take your brush in the other hand, and you can see that there's, I mean, this has been on the shelf for quite a while, so there's bits of dust absolutely all over the place. And you could, you could blow it away, and you could even try to use a vacuum cleaner, but neither of those methods are as good as just getting a little brush like this and quite simply dusting it all over. If there's little bits of cobweb or grit that's got stuck to the bottom or whatever, just take that off and continue. The bristles will get into all those nooks and crannies you see, all the little bits of detail, in between the handrails, behind the buffers, will get absolutely everywhere. And as if by magic, the locomotive just ends up completely dust free. Put it to one side, grab the tender, be careful of <laughs> be careful of that. Be careful of loads, fake loads that want to come out. If they do want to come out it might be a good idea to just take that out and put it to one side for a second save it flying off with your brush. But again, get, just get straight in there, get all the dust out. It doesn't matter whether it's a weathered locomotive, the bristles aren't harsh enough to, you know, to, to, <laughs> to weather it further. Don't worry about that. The only thing you do need to watch out for is if you've got, I mean you shouldn't have, but if you've got any little bits of detail that are really delicate, um, if they're only held on with like a bit of wax, a little bit of tacky wax or something, then it's a good idea to take those off. But generally, a locomotive needs to be quite robust, quite sturdy, and so there's nothing that delicate on there. I almost forgot the coal load then. Just a quick whizzing over of the coal load. Put that back into place. And the steam locomotive is done. And then turn our attention to the diesel locomotive. Exactly the same principle, exactly the same method. And you can pick up brushes like this for a couple of quid, you know, two or three quid, five pounds at the most. You don't need to pay much. Just get rid of all the cobwebs, all the bits of dust. Excellent. Okay, so with dusting done, the next thing we need to look at are the wheels. It's the next step in caring for your locomotive, and it doesn't matter whether you've got a huge Streamlined locomotive like the Duchess of Hamilton, uh, diesel class 37 from V Trains, or a Hornby 8F that's all nice and weathered and was designed by Stania a long time ago. They've all got wheels and they all need cleaning. The first weapon in your arsenal when it comes to cleaning wheels is this a Pico 
loco cradle, or servicing cradle, or servicing dock, or loco dock, or whatever you want to call it. It's basically just a gigantic piece of foam with a channel cut down the middle, and you can even make your own out of other materials. I've seen people do that on YouTube. Um, you basically get your locomotive, turn it upside down, in the cradle, just like that. Easy. The second weapon we need, when it comes to cleaning wheels, also by Pico, is this. It doesn't look very much, it doesn't look very exciting. In fact, it looks like somebody's attacked a hairdryer and pulled bits out of it or something. But, it's a Pico wheel cleaner. It comes in two parts. These are the ends we need to look at it in more detail. This end here has got metal bristles all down one side of it, which conduct electricity, and they're abrasive enough to remove tarnishing from wheels. On the other end of it, there's also this sort of like metal track, a little trough, which allows, if you've got two of them, for you to put them on the track, just like that, and then put the locomotive on top. But we're not going to be doing that today. And then the other side is literally like a little a little pin, a little spike, a little spatula, um, I don't know what you call it to be honest. It just completes the circuit. I'll show you what I mean in more detail shortly. Okay, so here we have two locomotives, two steam locomotives, with complica complicated linkage and gearing and, and wheels, and they both need their wheels cleaning. Ah, but there's one huge and really important difference. This is a DC locomotive, and this is a DCC locomotive. Why is that important? Well, your wheel cleaner equipment, these two little pieces of kit, basically need to be hooked up to the correct controller. If you're cleaning a DC locomotive, they need to be hooked up to a DC controller. And if you're cleaning a DCC locomotive, they need to be hooked up to a DCC controller. It's not essential, it's, it's not essential, but I definitely recommend it. You shouldn't really mix DC with DCC. It's never good. There's no need to do it. And if you've got, you know, a DC controller and a DCC controller, then why would you need to mix them? Just use the separate controllers for each type of locomotive, basically. So we'll do DC first. Oh gosh, yes, those wheels do look quite dirty. Um, heavy tarnishing on them there. The next thing is to wire these two little bits of kit up. Now as I say, they need hooking up to a controller, just like this. But be careful, you can't hook them up to the accessory ports on the end, because we need to control the speed that the wheels turn at, which means we need this variable controller here. Um, and you basically turning turning this knob, turning this controller, totally doesn't affect these at all. These two outputs are just a constant 16 volts, and so if we hooked these bits of kit up to those, the minute we touch the wheels, so the bristles on one side and the metal prong on the other, the wheels would just fly off at warp 10 and that's not how you clean wheels, basically, that's too fast. We don't need them to go too slow, but we definitely don't want them going too fast either. So I'm afraid, with the old style controllers like this, you can't use the accessory ports, they're no good. Now, your options are to simply coil, you know, you could perhaps strip, strip quite a bit of this back and, and, and coil it around the prongs like that. That is one option. You could, if you're quite inventive, quite creative, um, get a piece of Hornby power track, put this into the piece of track, and then simply run these pieces of kit off the track. But there is an even better option. Our good old friend, the rolling road. With the rolling road, we can simply plug in the DC controller there, or the DCC controller. You can plug in your DCC wires there if you're doing a DCC locomotive. 
doesn't matter, the rolling road will take both. And then, when it comes to these little screw bits at the far end, you basically just need to untighten, or loosen, one of the nuts, put the bit of wire in, just trap it in the gap, and then, sorry if you can't see very well, it is quite tricky, and then just tighten it. You see what I'm doing there? Just keep turning it, not too much. That'll do, that's perfect, that's great. That does conduct electricity, you see. And do the same thing on the other side. I've just wedged that piece of metal in that gap, you see, and then I'm tightening it, tightening it up. So there we have it. One piece of apparatus is wired into one side, the other piece is wired into the other, so we just need to put the rolling road temporarily to one side, because we're not actually going to be using it in terms of putting anything on it, we're just using it for its power, basically. As I say, this is a DC locomotive, so I'm going to connect a DC controller to the rolling road. So I now have DC power going into the rolling road, coming out of the rolling road to these two parts here. So this is positive and this is negative, or this is negative and this is positive. It really doesn't matter. So long as one of them touches one side of the locomotive and the other touches the other, it'll go.